Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to yet more Nicole. You join me. Actually, it's a fair bit of time has passed since the last time. You probably noticed we're up to the, uh, the 29th of October now. You also noticed that we have been hoarding money like Billio, because I've been doing lots of lab work, and that lab work has also got my wit up to over half, up to 564 in wit, which is very, very good indeed. So we're just going to keep cracking on with that wit stat. I think we are definitely going for the Jeff ending at this point, because I want the madman to develop the magic potion, because I don't know how dark this game's going to go with that, but I feel like it could be pretty damn dark. Now, today in class is terrible. I can't concentrate, says Nicole, which is a shame. She has, like, maxed out morale and energy. I've been very good at keeping her stats up, so uh, that's a shame. Let's Let's find out why. Oh, no, it's not. It's just that was actually just a normal message. I thought that was a, a, a cutscene beginning. It wasn't. Never mind. On with the day to day work. I mean, look at this. I'm getting like anything up to 25 wit and anything up to $25 for doing this. This is great. 25 wit up. Yes. I mean, almost no money. I mean, a, a, girl, a girl is not making bank here, but I do at least get the wit. Well, I tell you what, I feel like as time keeps going by, I am now really kind of well effectively got into a good routine for getting my stats up and getting my money up, but I'm not running into like any encounters for like two weeks. So I feel like I need to go and kind of, I need to kind of get something else up. I feel like one of the things that must be coming up is this has become available during this month, um, the online shopping. So I now have the online shopping available. I have a ridiculous amount of money, uh, quite frankly. Uh, and I'm understanding from the little uh, things that come up at the end of each day, the, uh, the hints, is that I basically am buying, I can basically buy things now. And I'm feeling like that's now going to be pretty much the, uh, the key to everything at this point. So obviously I've got these four at the top that are basically books that could actually, uh, you know, increase... Uh, my stats, but my stats do not need increasing. My wit is clearly going to be maxed out very, very soon. However, other than this, we're actually dealing with gifts, and we gift these to boys. It doesn't tell you which is the most appropriate thing to gift. So, what I'm going to guess is that, obviously, the really antique stuff is for Darren, because he likes old stuff. So, and also computer stuff. So, obviously, USB lap chart, coffee firmus is kind of like computing. I'm going to guess, like, it's led to that. Maybe book light as well. Obviously, things like the cursor, obvious, the school pennant and the under armor. Under armor. It's a very dramatic name for just a poncy gym shirt thing. And things like the piggy bank and the day plan are obviously related to like organizing yourself. Prudent, saving, sensible tomorrow. Those are obviously uh, for Ted. So, though obviously Jeff is kind of less obvious because there's kind of not there's kind of not a thing that's like you know, the mad scientist stuff. I'm going to kind of, anything that's not obviously for someone else, I'm going to say is for Jeff. Because obviously that one's obviously for Kurt. And the fuzzy socks, I don't know who the fuzzy socks are for actually, maybe, I'm not sure about that one. The MP3 player, the MP3 arm brace and the earbuds strike me as for likely to be for Darren. So what I'm going to say is this all-purpose cleaning cloth would be for someone in the lab. So let's see what happens if I buy this. So I can, yeah, so do this, yep, and then I just need to give the gift to Jeff. I'm giving you the gift of a cloth. Do you want to give the item? Yes, I do. I call Jeff to my dorm to give him a gift. Okay, so yeah, I'm now actually calling characters to my dorm, fine. Jeff, guess who's got a present for you? I whip out the cleaning cloth I bought for Jeff and wave it like a hanky. Just in case you get things dirty while you do your experiments, you can clean up with this. But remember to wash it, okay? Ah, how clever. This is sure to be useful during the synthesis procedure. My humble thanks, assistant. Ah, okay. So I can indeed force my relationship up with Jeff by getting him good presents. Now, did that actually use... Did that use uh, space? Oh, it's the weekend. Okay, so as it's the weekend, I don't have much else for, useful to do. I'm going to go and buy all the presents. I've got this huge pile of money. It doesn't seem to do anything else. So I may as well do this. So the pocket watch... Is the pocket watch for... Is that the only timepiece here? Is that the only thing for keeping the time? Because I feel like that's probably then for for Ted. Because he's, yeah, keeping track of time. The leather-bound journal... I mean, the thing about Jeff is he's a massive... Oh, the cane. The cane is... Jeff is a massive ponce. He would love the cane. Yeah, or use this for yourself. And gain... Oh, wait, hang on. 
I could use it for myself and pick up a bit of... Oh, the social stat. Does that mean it ought to be for Darren if it gives me the social stat? Well, I don't know. I mean, it did specifically say about this item. It was good for waving around like a sword. And it's big and pointed. So I'm going to say Jeff's going to like this. I'm going to say, yeah, Jeff. Give, give Jeff the cane. What the... Why has it gone dark? It's sunset. I called Jeff to my dorm to give him the gift and... Jeff, guess who's got another present for you? I tried to clumsily spin the cane I had for Jeff in my hand, but nearly whack myself in the arm with it. Ow. Totally not smooth. Uh, here. This is for you. Is that a cane? Uh oh, he doesn't look happy. Jeff hurriedly grabs the cane from me and spins it in his hand effortlessly. Wow. Show off. Remarkable! Everyone knows the true symbol of an alchemist is that of his staff. Oh, okay, not for reasons I was expecting, but seems like he likes it. Are you really not just making these up as you go along? Never. I thank you, my assistant. With this, I am one step close to becoming a true modern-day alchemist. Plus 16! Oh, wow. Okay, he really likes the cane. Slightly weirdly too much. Well, let's keep online shopping. It's like... The weekend I do nothing but the extra classes, so I may as well do more of that. And then we've got the leather-bound journal. I kind of think it might be the leather-bound journal, but I mean, assuming it's an equal number of things for everyone. So what are the other ones for him? Yeah, I'm going to say leather-bound journal for him. I mean, it doesn't actually matter. I've got so much money, I can just throw gifts at him. So this, oh yeah, this item would give me 24 points of wit. It's got to be, yeah, for, for wit, it's got to be for Jeff, surely. Surely, give Jeff the journal. I call Jeff to my dorm for the third time in a single day, which he doesn't find weird at all, and... Jeff, guess who's got yet another present for you? I show Jeff the small journal I bought him. It's a fancy one with a leather covering, smooth to the touch. You seem to like the type of guy who can never have enough notebooks. It's good quality, I promise. Jeff takes the journal from me and runs his hands over the face of it. Hmm, I didn't expect something like this from you, assistant. Consider me pleasantly surprised. That's what I do. I get you when you least expect it. Oh my god. Nicole's the killer. <laughs> uh, my thanks to you then. I'll use this well. And oh, another big increase with Jeff. We are looking good with Jeff all of a sudden. And that's the end of the day too. I've lost... I've spent $125 on Jeff, but never mind. This, apparently, the gifts is pretty much the way to get your relationship with these guys up, isn't it? And it's Sunday, so let's carry on just buying stuff for Jeff. Apparently, uh, Nicole has an Amazon Prime membership, and we live in the future where there's flipping uh, Amazon drones, because she can just get things. She can order things online and then get them the same day. In fact, she can get them within a few hours. She must be using Shuttle. I don't know if you have Shuttle in the US. It's a service in the UK that you can get something uh, couriered to your house the moment you've bought it. It's really cool. I love it. Okay, let's go over these to figure it out. So, that is Ted. That's Darren. Ted. Ted. Darren. Kurt. Kurt. A belt. A stylish way to keep your pants up when your waistband fails to you. Not sure... Darren, Darren, Kurt, possibly Darren, Darren, not sure, Darren, Ted. Well, I feel like there's a lot for Ted and a lot for Darren there that's pretty obvious. So I'm going to say the scarf. The scarf's nice and poncy. Yeah, let's go. Let's go for the scarf. Let's go for the scarf. What does it do? Social. No, give it to Jeff. Give it to Jeff. It's a massive ponce scarf, and he's a massive ponce. Yes, give the scarf to Jeff. So I call Jeff to my dorm and give him the gift, and... And guess who's got yet more? It's the weekend of giving Jeff presents. I have the scarf bundled up in my hands, and I offer it to Jeff. Would you want this? I know you wear scarves sometimes. Is that a rhetorical question? Naturally, of course I would like it. Jeff eagerly snatches the scarf out of my hands before I can blink. Scarves are the perfect cross between a provision of warmth and a practical fashion statement. They're understated, yet bold, classy, yet casual. Must I go on? No, I mean, no, you don't have to. All that matters is you like it, right? Like it? Certainly not. Uh-oh. But I love it, I certainly do. Yay! 
I've got Jeff something he loves. Thank you very much, assistant. I will treasure it. Oh, good. So that's a plus 20. Bloody hell. He really likes the damn scarf. All right, let's crack on with this. This is going very well. This is going very well indeed. Right, so now we know he does like Ponty things. Fuzzy socks doesn't strike me as a Jeff sort of thing. But a nice belt, a nice fancy belt, I think could be just the thing. So that gives me zeal. Oh, it gives zeal. Does that mean it's for... No, because I gave the, the, the cane, gave, um, the cane gave the social stat, not, uh, not wit, but it was still for Jeff. So that doesn't mean anything. I'm going to give, yeah, give the belt to Jeff. So, Jeff, I've got you a belt. So, it's yet more presents. I showed Jeff the present I got him. But he holds it in his hand and shakes his palms at it. No, no, no. Get that out of my sight. What? You don't like this? That might be putting it too mildly in your case. Just put it away, please. I have no need for it. Gosh, you could have been nicer about it. I guess I have to return this or give it to someone else. I don't know. Ooh. So, oh, okay, it wasn't a one chance thing. I now get to... So I get I get extra zeal and a bit of morale or energy. Um, does it strike me as a Darren thing? Would Ted like it? Ted, come over to my house. I call Ted, oh, I call Ted to my dorm, give him the gift, and... Do you have a second, Ted? I've got something for you. I give him, you see, it will make Ted more efficient because his trousers will not be falling down. So come on. Give him, give him, give him the, give him the belt. What the heck is wrong with you? Oh no, not again. I couldn't resist, but here it's yours. I know you don't care much for fashion stuff, but this is a popular brand for reason. Try it. Hmm. If you went for all this trouble of buying it, I might as well. That's the only reason though. Don't let it go to your head. Yeah, yeah, just make sure it fits, all right? Right, I hear you. Ted stretches out to full size to compare the circumference of his waist. Thanks, Nicole. I owe you. Aha! Okay, so that was, a, that was a thing for Ted. That was a thing for Ted, never mind. And that was the end of the day. A bit of a waste of time there, unfortunately. The belt wasn't the right thing for Jeff, so we need to find another thing for Jeff. Because it's, um, it's said in the tips at the bottom, it's five items each for each of these guys. So I just need to find the right thing for Jeff. That's the other thing. Ooh, wait, hang on. We actually have a thing going on. I'm guessing it's... Presumably, as I haven't had, like, a scene for, like, weeks, and now suddenly I've got a scene, I'm guessing that the scene in question is probably going to be... I'm now going to run into a whole bunch of Jeffs, because I've got my my uh, my wit stat and my relationship with Jeff stat up so damn high. So, mm, I take a moment to stretch my arms towards the sky. The sun feels so nice today. Lately, it's just been cloudy day after cloudy day. I was starting to think the sun had gone on a permanent vacation. It's flipping autumn heading towards winter, Nicole. This is how weather works. After Jeff and Ted brought it up, I looked up this arboretum place, and it turns out to be built into the park in town. Pretty nifty. That's why I'm waiting here for Jeff to arrive. He told me today was the day we were going to find that midnight trome flower. Aha! Okay, so we're finally going to get some closure on that. I took the initiative of looking that up too. It's a very distinctive flower. The petals are in this groovy shade of purple, but as you go towards the edge, they fade into white. It also has this shape, like a peeled open banana peel. I don't know how else to describe it, but the petals hang off the sides, revealing the inside where the seeds and stuff should be. Not your typical flower, but on the bright side, should not be too hard to spot. But where is Jeff? You'd think he'd be first since he planned this and all. I shoot my eyes from the sun with a hand, and oh, there he is. Found him. Jeff's coming up the entrance, and he regards me with a surprised nod. Why, you're prompt and early today. I thought I would be the first to arrive for sure. And Jeff has some very fancy digs going on. He's got, uh... Got a very fancy jacket, and again, quite the low-cut top. In fact, his top is about as low-cut as Nicole's, which is kind of... In fact, he's actually wearing the reverse Nicole clothes. He's wearing pretty much the same thing as me, but with the colours reversed, which is... I, that's probably why he's embarrassed. He knows he has to go home and flipping change. As they say, the early bird gets the worm. Yes, but since the midnight trome flower is our proverbial worm, let's not waste any more time. We leave immediately. I watch Jeff march ahead, moving with purpose. Whoa, slow down. You act like we've got stiff competition on our hands. I doubt it, but you don't understand, assistant. The seconds that pass by while that flower is not in my grasp is a second of everyone's life wasted. You are aware it is about three weeks after we originally discussed this flower, but never mind. I'm not going to act like I'm not used to Jeff's self-entitlement by now. 
Better get moving before his highness gets antsy. We head through the side of the park. There's no big sign that says welcome to the Arboretum, but it's obvious when we reach it. It's like we're in a whole different place. There are way more trees here, and a small creek to the side of well-paved asphalt path. Reeds and random species of brush poke out to anyone who strays too close to the sidewalk edges. But no flowers. Hmm. It doesn't appear like there are any species of flowers in this section. They must be in a different section. Just how big is this arboretum anyway? I'm an alchemist, not a civil engineer. My genius is dedicated to medicines and medicines alone. But if I had to make a scientific assessment, I would say... Very big. In other words, you're as clueless as me. I sigh and sag my shoulders, but it doesn't take too long for me to pep right back up. Guess that means we'll have to go to exploring. It shouldn't be too hard to find, right? It shouldn't, if cowboy's words are to be believed. Jeff starts off again, and it takes me a running start to catch up this time. It's not half bad walking through this place with Jeff. Whenever there's an especially neat looking plant, he points it out and begins explaining all about it. The info he has can get way overwhelming, but I do pick up a few cool factoids. However, right as he's in the middle of explaining why those vines to the side are the colour they are, Jeff spots a couple walking towards us up ahead. Curses! I nearly jump. Jeez, he sounds petrified. I take a closer look, and there's nothing out of the order about the guy and the girl. They look like your average college students to me. Do you know these guys? One of them. I usually don't care to remember those who bore me, but I recall that girl and I shared a class together last year. We were partners in the same lab section. But you didn't really like her, huh? Not a single iota. Well, don't panic. Just do what you do best. Pretend you like her. Though, that's really mean. I'm sure she's a nice girl. I take a second look at her. Dang, they're getting closer. She looks nice. What she looks like doesn't matter. Just follow after me and maintain the ruse. Jeff takes a second to clear his throat, then starts forward with a beaming smile. It's similar to the one he wore when he first approached me that one day. He's really good at this. It's almost like he has to flip a switch. An instant Mr. Perfect. Hey! The girls squeal in surprise as she spots Jeff, who calls out to her. Oh, hey! They approach each other like it's been a million years and meet in the middle of the sidewalk. It's been a while. How are you doing? I'm just fine, thank you. And it hasn't been that long. Just last semester. Yeah, but after that summer vacation, it feels like forever, don't you think? The two of them share a laugh over this. I have to hand it to Jeff. For a moment, I believe he's actually interested in anything this girl has to say. I'm going to say, if I were Jeff, I'd be going for this girl, not Nicole. She's a bit hotter than Nicole. What brings you to the Arboretum? Taking a walk? The girl hugs the arm of the guy, making the tips of his cheekbones go red. Aw, how sweet. Yeah, it can get pretty around this time of day. What about you? This is perfect timing. We're looking for a specific exhibit. Do you know if there's any midnight trone flowers growing in the Arboretum? Oh yeah, I'm not sure where exactly, but there's a flower garden somewhere near the back of the Arboretum. Should be some there. Oh really? Great! Guess that's our cue to go! Jeff points forward in a joking manner. Thanks for the help. Have fun on your walk. I hope you find the exhibit you're looking for. Jeff and the girl give each other departing ways before they both make off in different directions. Once we're definitely out of earshot, Jeff groans tiredly. Could that have been any more of a waste of my time? At least I managed to procure some information out of her. She was useful for that. That's a little mean, isn't it? She didn't seem bad. Bad she is not, but interesting? Worth my time? That's hardly the case. I only care about making this potion. Nothing more. Jeff slyly grins at me. Honestly, you should leave the thinking to me and do your job, assistant. You allow your mind to be clouded by the most inane things. I feel something inside my head snap as I take in what he's just said. Taking a deep breath and counting to ten is not going to work. How dare he act so condescending towards me when all I'm doing is being reasonable. Okay, you know what, Jeff? My mind isn't clouded by inane things. Unlike you, I just happen to give a hoot about other people. So just say whatever you want. I'm not stupid because I want to be nice. I'm way smart. Smart enough that I can find your stupid flower on my own. I stick my tongue out at Jeff for darting down the road ahead of me. And at least I don't have to pretend to be someone I'm not in order for people to like me. Oh, the music's gone a bit hardcore all of a sudden, hasn't it? Excellent, I like this. I make sure to scream that last bit before it's out of earshot. Stupid Jeff. 
It's lucky I'm not the type of girl to back out on a commitment or I'd be running out of this arboretum rather than farther in. From here on out, it'd be better off if we worked solo. Clearly, Jeff's outgrown the need for me anyway. I'm still fuming as I walk through the Arboretum. I hate this. I hate being angry. It feels like I'm being sucked down to something gross and heavy. I at that point realised I'd just walked into the tar pit. Oh, I'd love it if that was the next line, but sadly not. What is it that Dad says that you do when you get into an argument? Try to see through the other person's shoes? Wait, no. It's step in the other person's shoes. Duh. As much as I don't want to, I think about Jeff and try to get into that warped mind of his. But how am I supposed to do this if I don't even get why Jeff does half the things he does? Maybe the only reason this is happening is because we don't get each other. I start walking as I get all philosophical on myself. It's true, isn't it? I can't say I know much about Jeff. It's not like he knows that much about me. We don't hang out that often. We're not really friends. Our relationship is as professional as an unofficial contract can get. And frankly, that sucks. I twist the end of my ponytail between my fingertips. How can I change that? What do I have to do in order to understand each other? I should save that for another time, possibly after I find the midnight trome flower for Jeff and apologise for yelling at him. I'm sure I said some mean things, even if he was the one who started it. But hey, are those the flowers over there? I can see different colours over in the distance. I lift myself onto my tiptoes and try and see farther. I'm like 95% sure those are the flowers. The only problem is, the display is kind of at the bottom of this grassy incline. I look to my right. The way veers from the flowers, and I came here from the left, so that's out. I guess I could just keep right and hope I reach the flowers eventually, but... I could also just make my way down this slope. There's no fence or anything. I bet that's because they don't think anyone would be dumb enough to actually try and slide down it. It's not very steep, but it has to be dangerous. Maybe even illegal. But if I take this way, then there's a good chance I'll get to the flowers before Jeff does. That alone is enough motivation to spur me along. I angle a foot flat on the slope and test if it's left enough for me to carefully step my way down. Yeah. I don't think I'm about to fall, this will be a cinch. My other foot does the same and soon I'm taking step after step, making my way down the slope. At least it's relatively short. I wouldn't be doing this if it was like a mountain. However, I don't know what happens but my foot slips out from under me. I barely gasp in pain before I fall hard on my butt and start tumbling down the hill. Oh, it's all gone black. I yell in panic as my vision becomes full of dust and grass. I can't see anything. It gets in my throat, it's like my lungs are on fire as I beat against the ground again and again. My rattled mind wonders if this will ever end. I lose the feeling in my body and I black out before I even realise that I've stopped. When I come to, I'm lying on my back staring up at the sky. Clear blue is merging with orange near the horizon. It must be near late afternoon. And indeed, the clock has actually moved on. And where the hell is Jeff? Why didn't he come and flipping find me? I groan and sit up, feeling like a doll with rusty joints. I seriously hope I didn't hit my head on something. I feel around my scalp. No blood. That's a good sign. Yeah, but being passed out for four hours isn't a good sign either. Blimey. I notice there's a white bandage on my arm, however. Finally, you're up. My head jerks to the right and I see Jeff sitting cross-legged next to me. In his hands, he's holding a pot filled with soil and a very familiar flower. You found the midnight trone flower. I cough harshly. My voice sounds shot like claws against metal. Yes, Cowboy was right when he said he could find them here. I'll have to remember to torment him less harshly next time. He sets the pot between his legs and shuffles around so he's facing me. His voice is tight, like he's running out of air. How are you feeling? I feel like I just rolled down a hill. Jeff seems to relax as I find enough energy to crack a joke. Was he worried about me? How fitting. That's because you did. Imagine that. I try to laugh, but it comes out as a wheeze. Gross. I lick around my mouth to try and get rid of that dry feeling. Why are you here? You found your flower? Aren't you wasting everyone's lives by just sitting around? Jeff looks at me like I've spoken gibberish. If I went home, I would have left you alone. Well, yeah, but... I tried to word what I was about to say in a nicer way. I didn't think that'd be too big of a problem for you. I pull my knees up and hug them to my chest. My body shivers a little, possibly from the trauma, but mostly because Jeff's attitude takes me completely off guard. Jeff doesn't seem all too comfortable with this either, and it takes him a moment before he can find the words to speak. In any normal case, it wouldn't be a problem, but you're my assistant, which makes me responsible for your well-being. Wouldn't reflect well on me if you were to die here. You know them, police officers. Jeff flutters his lips derisively. I recognise his attempt to lighten the mood and thank him silently. You managed to injure your arm, but I took care of that. Yeah, I noticed. 
I take a look down at the bandage again. I'm no expert, but it looks like he did a really good job at this. Where'd you get the medical supplies? I had them on my very person, naturally. Impressed? I'm tempted to ask exactly why he keeps medical supplies for no good reason, but I chalk it up to Jeff just being Jeff. But more importantly, I really don't know what to say. I yield all that mean stuff about him, and then he goes and acts totally considerate and nice. Ooh, ooh, okay. Just say thank you to him. Save your words, that doesn't seem good, or let, a, let out the tears. Well, I'm gonna be honest, like this is the first time Jeff's really shown me much in the way of affection. And I think he only did it because like I was vulnerable because I'd just fallen and been injured. So I think he only, if I act really cool and dispassionate with him, he'll do the same with me. But if I actually am like hurt or emotional, he'll respond positively. So I think I'm going to let out the damn tears and hope that that is actually the right way to go. Because save my words, definitely not. Because he's been really, yeah, cool and distant. But when I, I was hurt, he actually showed he cared. So let's show just how hurt I am. I can't stop the pressure building behind my eyes. And there are tears sliding down my face before I can turn away. Are, are, are you? Once he realises that yes, I am crying my eyes out. Jeff is thrown completely off kilter. What's wrong? Does it hurt more than I predicted? Is my medicine defective? Ah, I knew the recipe had kinks. Did he just treat me with recipe that he himself had invented? I'm bloody not keen on that. No, that's not it. I stop blubbering for a second to wipe my eyes with my wrist. My body shakes as I start to hiccup. As much as I try to console myself, it just won't stop. My words come out like vomit. Oh, a real poet wrote that line. <laughs> You were just really nice and I wasn't expecting it, or maybe it's because I just fell down a hill, I don't know. Thank you so much, even though I was so mean to you before, you still helped me. I'm all balled out by now, unsure of what to do, Jeff uncomfortably places his hand on a shoulder. The gesture makes me cry even harder. Oh yes, we are getting Jeff up now. Excellent, we are all Jeff up in this place. Please try to calm down, it was not as though I was very pleasant either. Oh, he's admitting fault. That's a first. Mind you, I'm never truly pleasant, but I like to think that sometimes I can be reasonable. Jeff slowly drags his hand over to my back. I can feel him rub up and down my spine. What you said was not without merit. It is true that I can't be friends with someone unless I pretend to be that perfect person they imagine me to be. But no loss. I consider it less distractions for completing my potion. I choke out to laugh at his response, as predictable as it is. He can have such a one-track mind. Still, it doesn't make me feel better that he's not completely mad at me, and that he admitted he was in the wrong too. A few shuddering breaths is enough to calm me down. Once I'm no longer hiccuping or crying, Jeff removes his hand from my back. All fine now? Yeah, I'm okay. I sniff and wipe my face one last time. I'm sure my makeup's all ruined now. I'm sorry I blew up at you, Jeff. No need for that, I would have left you here if I felt otherwise. Jeff gets to his feet and extends a hand. He impatiently wiggles his fingers at me. Going up? With his help, I pull myself to my feet with a wince. The scrape in my arm still stings a bit, but I can feel Jeff's medicine is really doing its job. Jeff bends over to pick up the pot of flour, and I get a better look. So this is a midnight trone flour. It's a lot prettier up close than it was online. It smells good too. Not traditionally floral, but kind of sweet in a weird way. I concur. Luckily, the Arboretum had some of these on sale. We didn't have to go through the trouble of stealing one. I laugh nervously. Oh, right. I never thought about how we'd get the flower if they weren't for sale, huh? It's against the law to take flowers from public places, right? Very much so, Assistant, but we averted that situation for the time being. We can leave the law-breaking and rule-crushing for another time. With a pot cradled under an arm, Jeff starts a few steps ahead. He soon stops mid-step and mutters under his breath like something's wrong. Jeff turns back to me. Do you feel well enough to move? We can wait a few minutes if you require. The fact that he's showing concern is enough to make me ignore the dull pain I can feel all over. I beam and grab my hands behind my back. I think I'm going to be A-OK. -okay. okay, I feel like me and Jeff have had a bit of a breakthrough there. We, uh, we can definitely be friends if this is how it's going to be from now on. Though I missed the chance to go to work today. Oh, that's a shame. And with today done, my wit nice and high and my relationship with Jeff looking spot on, it is the end of another day and I think I'm going to call it a part there. But I will crack on very soon. I feel like actually things are escalating very rapidly now. I think we're very much committed to 
Jeff, we're barreling through the game. Soon I'll be able to max out my wit, and when my wit's maxed out, I'm going to turn on to the clues because I want to solve the mystery and get the good Jeff ending. So yes, that will all be coming up soon. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Nicole. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Haha, <laughs> I'm a genius at time. Oh, oh, okay. This escalated quickly. I'd, I'd like to fly your drone. It's a bit about a butterfly in a bucket. What does that tell you about the human condition? Are we the butterfly and is capitalism the bucket? What happens if you go right to the back in time? The very beginning of time. Oh, you literally just burn the universe.